Hi, my name's Gareth Davis and I'm Principal Flute with the London Symphony Orchestra. I'm going to run through a few orchestral excerpts that you will hopefully be playing in your audition for the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. Now let's start with Beethoven's Leonora Overture No. 3. It's one of the most widely played excerpts at orchestral auditions and there's a few little things that people always slip up on, mainly the timing. Now, I would advise you first of all to go and listen to a few recordings of this piece because there are many, many different tempos you can play it at. But pick one that you're comfortable with and stick to it. So if you go from the opening, it's normally done in six, it's quite slow, so make sure you take a big breath. Now don't worry too much, it says fortissimo at the beginning, but the whole orchestra is playing, so don't blow all your lungs out right at the beginning and then run out of breath halfway through. So it's really important to remember your sense of pitch as well. It's very easy to start that note, it's fortissimo, and with a diminuendo to piano at the end of the first bar. Make sure you keep the pitch up, don't let it drop, because unfortunately the violins won't drop with you. Now, the next section, where we move on to bar 17, again, remember the tempo, because we've got different changes in uh, rhythm here. So it moves from crotchets and then we've got triplets. But just remember when you're playing the triplets there's an answering phrase of the triplets as well in between. So don't rush through it. Remember you've got to play the rests as well. It's really important in that triplet bit that you keep a steady tempo. I've heard so many people come and play at auditions for the London Symphony Orchestra and they suddenly change to a completely different tempo and it's one of those things that shows that you perhaps haven't played in an orchestra before or you're not aware of what's going on around you. So always make sure you know what else is happening in the music. It's not just all about flute solos. Now when it moves on to the Allegro section, there's a very famous solo with a bassoon. Now, Again, don't try and play this too quickly because you'll probably come a cropper at the end. And again, make sure the relationship between the different sections of the music is the same. We've got triplets, crotchet triplets at the end, but before that we've got quavers. Make sure that you keep a steady tempo. Practice it with a metronome. It's a kind of obvious thing to say, but, you know, it's amazing how many people don't do it. <laughs> Now let's have a look at Brahms 4. There's a very famous solo in the last movement. Um, it's one of those moments where seemingly the whole movement just stops all of a sudden and the flute's left alone with a very, very small accompaniment of strings. Now when you look at the music, it doesn't look like a particularly fantastic solo, but it's one of those moments where if you get it right, it can be a real showstopper. Now, the most important thing to do is to look at where the phrases go. Brahms marks lots of small phrases and he marks lots of crescendos and diminuendos as well. There are also many, many quaver rests all the way through. Now, don't get caught up with the rests. If you always play the rests, then it, the whole piece stops. It's important. It's one of those things that we all do as flute players. Sometimes you see a rest and think, oh, I better take a breath. You don't actually need a breath every time there's a rest. In fact, if you take a breath every time, you'll probably explode about bar 16. So just make sure that you actually play through as one phrase. After the initial rundown, 
you get this phrase. And then, it, then there's a rest and it continues. Another rest. Now on those rests, there are string chords. They're very, very quiet. But you can see if you play it like that and you play all the rests, it can be very choppy and it doesn't work. Imagine it's a really, really long phrase. So take a long breath. Don't take a breath at every single rest and try and play it all the way through to the end. Now the other thing to remember is not to overdo the crescendos and decrescendos. I always think of them more as expressions, so perhaps vary your vibrato. Just don't do lots of bulgy bits because it just sounds ridiculous. And just remember to keep that last bit. Brahms has written a crescendo in for the last two bars, so when it goes down into the low register, don't let the sound disappear. Keep supporting it from down here and keep on blowing. But just enjoy the fact it's one of those fantastic solos where you can really, really sing out over the orchestra. Now, some of you may want to audition on the piccolo. Um, I am not a piccolo expert, but I can give you a few tips. The important thing to remember when playing the piccolo is to still blow. A lot of people stop blowing and the sound just disappears. Now, there are several pieces you can have a go at. There's Chike 4, which I will not be playing for you today. Um, you can also have a look at the overture to Semiramide. Um, this is quite difficult because it's got lots of repeated notes, but again, just like the flute excerpts, approach them in the same way. Just make sure that you keep a steady tempo. <clears throat> so I hope you found some of those tips useful. Now, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your videos, and don't forget, if you have any questions that you want to ask about any of these pieces or about flute playing in general, um, I will be able to answer some of those questions on the internet. I look forward to it, and good luck. <laughs>